Hi, I'm Arthur, and this is part 8 in a 20-part series. I am doing covering second founding successor chapters, or as close to second founding as I can get. Do you need to have seen the other prior videos to this one to understand this one? No, but it would make me happy. This video is a long time coming. I feel I speak for a lot of YouTubers, especially the ones who take themselves a bit too seriously when I say that. When I started doing these videos, there were topics I didn't want to cover specifically because I didn't think I had the skills necessary to do it. I wasn't the best at this when I started, and hell, I'm not that great now, but I think to some degree I am ready to discuss my favorite band of brothers in the entirety of the setting itself. If I were to pick top three favorite chapters of Space Marines, it would be Night Lords, Emperor Spears, then Black Templars. The Night Lords are my favorite chapter in Legion just because of their story. It might seem kind of simplistic to everyone out there, but to me the idea of watching your father's mental health slowly deteriorate is one of the most depressing but somehow human things that has ever happened to a space marine. The Night Lords do not technically have warbands in the same capacity as other legions. They did splinter off and they do have smaller warbands, but they do not get the level of center stage attention in the setting that is 40k. Aside from one. One that did not have a name, only going by its company designation even in the modern day setting of 40k. The 10th company is simply what they go by. They do not have a title. I suppose you could call them the Exalted's Warband, but even still, they refer to themselves as the Tenth, or even the Remnants of the Tenth. And when I say the books they are involved in are single-handedly the best reading experiences I have had in my entire time reading 40k fiction, I am not speaking with any hyperbole. This is the video where I am going to go on a long tangent about how the Night Lord's Omnibus is one of the best series of books I have ever read in my entire life. It humanizes Space Marines so fucking much that by the end of the book, I was so sad that I would never see Talos, Uza, Sirion, or Zarl ever again, for more reasons than one. What can I say to describe this warband? They are scavenging predators, they hunt for weakened prey to take down and steal from in order to gain any resources they can. They launch raids on Imperial worlds to accomplish these goals, and because of this, they have mixed successes. The main reason being is that Night Lords are objectively the worst Space Marines, in terms of design purpose. As they are, Space Marines are shock troopers built to run in and murder fucking everything as quickly as possible and weather the storm that comes afterwards. Now, say what you want about this being their design purpose and how other legions have gone about it differently, the Night Lords have always been the polar opposite to that. They torment, they stalk, they do not kill cleanly, they maim for the sake of it. They are a dangerous force of sociopaths. They are not warriors like the other legions, they are murderers. The Warband of the Tenth is a particularly fleshed out warband because it was the only one that had possession of a marine with a very similar level of foresight psychically gifted to them like that of their Primarch, Conrad Kurz, one of the company's old apothecaries. A man named Talos Valkyron. He is single-handedly my favorite character in the entire setting. He is a creature beset by his own duality. He understands the morals and motivation of Kurz more than anyone else ever did, aside from maybe Sevatar. He is a revolutionary, and in the sagas of the Tenth, he is someone who fights for something better. But. He is one of the many different characters that populate the warband that make it end up feeling like a family. Not a functional family, I mind you, but a family with its ties and burnt bridges. Each member knows that the Night Lords are not seen as dependable or even really that good at accomplishing much of anything these days due to their smaller size in the grand scheme of chaos. Their overall reluctance to submit to chaos magic 
most of the time, and their nature being very prone to bouts of backstabbing if your needs don't align with theirs. Each member of the Tenth has their own motivations for doing what they do. Some have sold out to chaos, and they all have their reasoning. Uzas, a berserker, sold his soul to corn in a moment of weakness in order to survive and gain the power to push through, now suffers daily from blackouts and red rages that he cannot control. Only with the application of a liberal amount of brain damage is he able to hold himself back anymore, but that's at the end of the series. Syrian, a night lord with a fucking amazing sense of humor and a completely out of place personality, is secretly a devotee to Slanesh. Not for any reason other than he wanted to know what the fear of others around him felt like. He is a sadist, a monster, and so is everyone else in the warband. Perhaps none are more monstrous than that of the Exalted, the old captain of their ship who is possessed by a zinch demon that has more or less taken complete control of him. He was once a man named Vandrit, but now the demon known as the Exalted leads the Tenth Company to do as they have been doing, relying on the memories of the man whose soul he still keeps around to pilot the ship and order his marines. There are different sects of marines on the ship, the ones that are loyal to Vandrid still and the ones that realize what he has become a pawn of chaos and nothing more. The ones that realize that tend to see Talos as the new savior of the Legion itself. Some people hate him, some people understand he is necessary for the Legion to survive. Some people want to use his gifts of future sight as a means to succeed for themselves only. But what does Talos want? To paraphrase one of the most tragic and depressing exchanges in the setting, he just wanted to be a hero. God fucking damn it, this is making me feel shit again. The Tenth Company is filled with so many flawed and interesting characters to the point where it makes the fucking Night Lords of all people interesting and dynamic characters. That you can love one second and in a second, you can absolutely despise the next. I will never fucking forgive you for what you did to him. Throughout the three book series of the Night Lords trilogy, you see the rise of Talos to become something interesting. Having him encounter the biggest players in the Chaos Marines roster, from Huron Blackheart all the way up to fucking Abaddon. To which, as any self-respecting individual would, he pisses off Abaddon so much that Abaddon almost kills him. There's some shit in this series so fucking cool, so fucking cold, that I still think about it every day. Moments that cause you to realize how empathetic a legion of serial killers can be. To give you an idea, I'm going to describe to you one scene that viewer discretion is kind of fucked. It is one of those scenes where if you are not prepared for it, it can hit pretty hard. I'm only going to spoil this scene, nothing else, and for those who are especially sensitive, I'm going to not go into too much detail and make sure that there's certain assurances so it's not too uncomfortable to discuss if it's not something you're interested in. So, at this point in the story, Talos has two slaves, as each individual Night Lord in Astartes usually does. They usually have their own slaves that work with him. You have Septimus, who has been with him for years, and the most recently added, Octavia. The two of them have become quite good friends and both manage Talos' equipment to a great degree. Talos is brought down to a maximum security ultra-violent prison world that Abaddon has invaded to get humans to work for him and his Chaos Legions. Basically just recruiting an army of murderers and nasties. He invited certain members of the Tenth Company to speak with him because he decides he wants to have Talos' gift of foresight for the 13th Black Crusade. Talos, to his credit, tells Abaddon to go eat a dick. Abaddon knocks him out for a bit, sends him deep into that chaos K-hole to see if it would persuade him to fall to a warp ketamine addiction like him, but he ends up saying no. The scene is Abaddon planned to kill both of Talos' slaves to punish him, among other things, for saying no. So the prison elevator was being raised up to the floor where Octavia and Septimus were staying. 
It was not Talos that was on that. And Septimus brings up a fact that genuinely chilled me to my fucking bones when I first read it. It was something to the effect of he had only just realized that he brought a woman to an all-men's prison that was filled with the most violent prisoners in the entirety of human society, and for the most part was left unguarded aside from the gunship he was on. Talos returns to find his ship ransacked, Septimus almost dead, missing an arm, missing an eye, and bleeding everywhere. Talos has a wound in his chest from where Abaddon almost killed him and sees Octavia was taken. Now, before you get too uncomfortable, I will say nothing happens to her other than she gets brutally beaten because Talos looks towards Septimus and simply says, I'm going to get her back. And Septimus says something so fucking hard that I think about it a lot. It's described that his white teeth are stained pink from all the blood that he was coated in. His single blue eye stares directly at Talos, and through the damage, he smiles painfully, bright and wide, and just says, Good hunting, master. Talos then cleaves a bloody path through the entirety of the remaining prisoners, like only a Night Lord can cutting the power of removing heads and terrifying every single fucking man he comes into contact with, eventually retrieving Octavia and using his own body to protect her. She is small and frail in comparison to him. Not worth too much to be honest, but in a display of humanity, he lowers himself to protect a mortal. They escape after having killed every single person who was left alive that invaded that ship. And once they return, I'm not going to say what happens to Septimus, it's kind of fucking cool, but the scene I just described is a single section of the first book. I would highly suggest reading it, as the entirety of the series is a lot like that, where everything that happens feels dramatic and every single character moment feels personal. These books are definitely some of my favorite, for a reason, and I want you to- because these characters are amazing. Re I want you to read about this warband and fall for the Night Lords the way that I did. And if you have read about Talos and his merry band of fucked up misfits, then let me know in the comments. I hold this series near and dear to my heart and I want to share in that joy with all of you. Also, remember to like and subscribe as it does help the channel. Alongside that, I want to thank my channel members for supporting me in my time of need. And if you want to see my content early or even see exclusive content, then become a channel member today. Till next time, just remember, if you're ever in the dark and hear a Slavic man silently hiss, pray sight, you should probably just break your own neck at that point because what happens next ain't gonna be pretty.